Good morning students. This is Veena Patil from Department of Computer Science, BLDA, CET, Vijaypur. So we are going to discuss on computer organization subject. As we have already discussed about it in the last class, uh, those who were present, we had already gone through the course learning objectives and uh, course outcomes. And also we saw what is the content of module 1 and which are the reference books to be used for this subject so we shall see uh, more uh, elaborately what are the basic structure of computer and uh, machine instructions and programs in this class uh, let's first uh, try to understand what is a digital computer a computer is a fast electronic calculating machine that accepts digitized input information, processes it according to a list of internally stored instructions and produces the resulting output information. So what does this sentence mean? This sentence means that a computer is nothing but a electronic machine which performs the task of calculating. It accepts digital input information the information that we give to the computer is a digitized input and it processes this input information according to a list of internally stored instructions. Now as it is a machine, I or a programmer have to tell what it has to do with these inputs and these instructions are actually stored as programs in the machine. So it uses this instruction and processes the input and produces the resulting output information. So this is the brief introduction of or brief definition of digital computer. Now coming to types of computer. See, whenever we want to purchase a computer, we usually see different modalities of the computer like we try to see the size the cost the computational power the intended use so depending on these we categorize the computer into different types so it is on the basis of size cost computational power intended use now let's have a look of uh, different uh, types of computer usually we classify the computers as desktop or laptop computers workstations supercomputers embedded computers now what are these desktops desktops are normal computers which you come across day to day in li in your library uh, or you may be having at home so these uh, desktops they consist of a big monitor a CPU a keyboard a mouse so generally all these things are connected to each other so we use them for general purpose so a variety of software can be installed on these desktops now subjected to cost and performance trade-off uh, it means the cost of the system depends on the application for which I am going to use or it depends on the performance which I am expecting from the system. For example, we have laptops. In laptops, uh, the monitor, the keyboard, the processor, the mouse, everything is fitted into one suitcase like box and the cost of this uh, laptop computer can vary differently I may get a computer at 20,000 also I may get a computer for 1 lakh also and this cost it basically depends on for what purpose I am using what are the uh, additional things that are there in the system okay then coming to workstations Workstations. Workstations are large and powerful computer systems. 
more computational power and they are used in engineering applications, graphics, etc. Workstations can be categorized as enterprise system or mainframes which are used for business data processing like we have our IBM mainframes, Yahoo, Google, different enterprise system and mainframes are there and the another variety of workstation is server computer which is a low end range computer which are basically networked and they have a high capacity performance and reliability and range from small servers to building size servers the size of these servers can be small or they can be as big as a building size the next one is supercomputer which is a high end range computer now supercomputers they are basically used for large scale numerical calculations such as weather forecasting aircraft design etc even in defense we use supercomputers embedded computers are nothing but they are hidden as component of systems they are stringent power and performance and cost constraint hidden as component of systems means they are small computers which can be uh, put into another system like our uh, you can say washing machine maybe the microwave or digital camera we are fitting small processor inside these systems and they are basically made to work on low power that is stringent power and their performance is also limited as their size is small and it is meant for only for the purpose of the um, system in which it is embedded and cost constraint it depends on uh, the system on which it is embedded functional units of computer let's have a look on the functional units of a computer what are the basic units of computers this is all what you have already studied in your first semester i'm just trying to brush it so the functional unit of a computer can be divided into three parts that is our part containing of input output devices we call it as io unit and the processor which consists of arithmetic and logic unit which you call ALU and the control unit with uh, these together make the processor and we have a memory so basically the functional units of computer consist of input output unit memory unit and the processor as we all have studied there are different types of input units input unit we have keyboard mouse joystick microphone all these can be uh, considered scanners uh, barcode readers these are all input devices output devices we have monitor printer speaker okay uh, these are all output devices now coming to our uh, memory unit before we go to memory unit let's have a look on uh, information handled by a computer usually we know that all the instructions that we are going to store in a computer they are called as machine instructions and these instructions go on the transfer of information within a computer as well as between the computer and its input output devices now specify uh, these uh, instructions specify the arithmetic and uh, logic operations to be performed and let's see what is a program a program is nothing but a list of instruction that performs a task so whenever i want to perform some task the instructions that i am going to give to the computer these set of instructions they are called as a programs so computer is com completely controlled by these stored programs now what is data data are numbers and encoded characters that are used as operands by the instructions uh, now uh, like uh, if i have two numbers a and b and these numbers 
are nothing but uh, they are operands on which I am going to perform some operation and these operands are called as datas. Now coming to source program. Now what is a source program? Source program is a program written in high level language. A program written in high level language we call it as a source program. What are datas? Datas are numbers and encoded characters that are used as operands by the instructions. Say for example, I have two numbers A and B or 2 and 3 and I want to perform some operation on them. For example, I want to perform addition operation. Then that becomes the operation on the two numbers which we call them as a operands. Okay. Now let's see what is a source program. The program that is written in high level language is called as a source program. And if I am going to use this program, this program has to be converted into a language that is, I mean, it has to be converted into machine level language, which is going to be understood by the system or the computer. Because as it is a machine, it only understands machine level language. Machine level language is nothing but it is in zeros and ones. That is digital signal. Uh, so the program that is converted into machine level language is called as a object program. Now whatever information we are going to store it is going to be encoded in binary code that is in the terms of zeros and ones. Now this binary coded number can be stored in different formats like we have binary coded decimal that we call as BCD. Here each decimal is encoded by 4 bits. So to store a number in BCD format we use 4 bits. And we have the next uh, system which we call American Standard Code for Information Exchange or ASCII code which we call here each character is represented as a 7 bit code and the third one is extended binary coded decimal interchange code EBCDIC which take 8 bits to denote a character. So a question may be asked on this in your gate exam like he will give you a number and he will ask if we are using BCD number, how many bits are required for, to store that particular number? So remember, if it is BCD, it takes 4 bits. If it is ASCII, it takes 7 bits. If it is EBCDIC, then it takes 8 bits. Okay. So coming to memory unit. Memory unit is nothing but uh, it stores programs and data. Uh, it consists of uh, two classes of storage as we already have studied in first semester primary storage and secondary storage. Primary storage is fast and programs must be stored in memory while they are being executed. If a program is to be executed, it has to be stored in the memory. Now, large number of semiconductor storage cells are used to construct the memory unit. Each storage cell is capable of storing either a 0 or 1 which is nothing but uh, we call it as a smallest memory unit is a bit which is capable of storing either a 0 or a 1. Now whenever we are going to store information in the computer it will be processed in terms of words. Words are nothing but group of bits. Now how many number of bits I am going to write into the memory at a particular cycle or how many number of bits I can access. That is nothing but word. Word is group of bits that I am going to write into the memory or I am going to read it from the memory at one time. Every word should be given an address which we call as a memory address. If I want to access any particular location in the memory, if I know where or which place from which place I am going to access, only then I will be able to 
access that's why we ad give addresses to the memory now we have ram mem memory in which any location can be reached in a short and fixed amount of time after specifying its address is called random access memory and the time required to access one word is called the memory access time now memory hierarchy cache memory main memory uh, this we will be dealing uh, in our upcoming chapters and next is uh, secondary storage uh, secondary storage are additional uh, storages which uh, are large and cheaper whenever we want to increase our storage we go for these secondary storages coming to arithmetic and logic unit which we call as alu most computer operations are executed in alu of the processor uh, load the operands into memory bring them to the processor perform operation in alu store the result back to the memory or retain in the processor uh, so alu consists of registers uh, which are nothing but storage uh, units of the memory and uh, they are uh, for fast control of alu control unit now let's see what control unit does all computer operations are controlled by the control unit the timing signal that count the input output transfer are also generated by the control unit since the control unit contains a timer and it keeps on generating timing signals now depending on these timing signal the input output transfer are got by the control unit control unit is usually distributed throughout the machine instead of standing alone as you see it's not at one point but its activity is throughout the machine so let's summarize the operation of a computer the computer it accepts information in the form of programs and data through an input unit and stores it in the memory information stored in the memory is fetched under program control into an arithmetic and logic unit where it is processed now processed information leaves the computer through an output unit all activities in the computer are directed by the control unit so this is all about uh, the computer in the next class uh, we are going to see about basic operations concept till then just go through the textbook thank you